Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are going to be making this Jolie's Boho Beach cover up. Now this cover up is made in four different sizes. It is a beach cover it up so it is made to be a bit oversized. It is going to come in a toddler size, one size fits all toddler, one size fits all child, one size fits all adult and then one size fits all plus size adult. Now the way that we are going to be working this project is in vertical rows. Vertical long rows. Uh, approximately the center of your vertical um, row is going to be where your shoulder is sitting and then we're going to go all the way down the back. So you'll have two really long panels, about twice this length, depending on what size you have. It might be smaller, it might be bigger. Um, we're going to make two panels exactly the same, and then we're going to seam up the front, leave a slit for the neck opening, and then seam the back part of it. Once that is all complete, we will be seaming up part of the sides, leaving a slit for the bottom and a slit open for the arms. And we'll be using just a chain for a little tie to go around the waist. This is a super light cover up with lots of air for breath. And of course, you don't necessarily need to use it for the beach. You can definitely wear it over you know, uh, a tank top and some leggings or anything like that. It's really like a tunic also, um, which works out just the same. Not a problem at all. Okay, so the materials that you are going to need for this project, we're using a light three weight yarn. It is ideal if you use a cotton or a cotton blend. And then for the tie, we're gonna be using a smaller three and a half, four millimeter hook size um, just to get those chains nice and tight so it doesn't stretch out. All right, everybody. There is a written pattern linked below for this cover up. So if you'd like the written pattern, preferably go ahead and go down there and check it out. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram under Jolie Knotts Crochet, as well as having a Jolie Knotts Crochet community on Facebook. You can join us and show us what you've created. So the yarn that I am going to be using for this project is Yarn B in Urban Chic. The color on this one is Coral. Um, the blue one that I showed you is the same yarn, but a different color. And I actually made it quite some time ago, so I cannot remember the color that I used for that one. This particular color is discontinued, um, but I do believe that the Urban Chic is still available at Hobby Lobby um, for this project if you want to use that same one. Other than that, ideally you would use a cotton yarn or a cotton blend yarn. Um, so if you're going to be wearing it around water, um, then it would help to dry it out a little bit easier. These come in um, 3.5 ounces, 275 yards. It is 78% uh, acrylic and 22% cotton. It is machine washable and dryable and it is a three lightweight yarn. Okay, we are also going to be using a six millimeter hook on this. And I am wearing my little finger cover because I did smash my finger in the bathroom door and I am saving you guys the uh, grossness of actually looking at it. So I'm gonna be wearing this for a while until it heals up and my nail is all grown back, all right? So hopefully that is fine by you. Now I will go ahead and leave the yardage that you need per size scrolling up on the screen 
Um, it does come in four sizes, toddler, kids, adult, and plus size. Because it is a cover-up, it is uh, very oversized, so it should fit a very wide range. There are one size fits all in those categories. Okay, I'm going to be making the child size with you guys today. And so to start the child size, I'm gonna start with 200 chains. So go ahead and get your 200 chains together and I will meet you back for the first row. Okay, I have my 200 chains. Now this is for the kids size. The toddler size should have 140 and the adult size, whether it's just an adult or a plus size, will have 250. So for row one, the first thing that we're gonna do is half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. And in every chain all the way down. So you should have an odd number of half double crochets. If you are looking to customize the length and make it longer or shorter than you would like, then feel free to do that in multiples of two, just as long as your row one stitch count is an odd number, then you will be fine. So go ahead and finish out row one of half double crochets and I will meet you back for row two. Okay, so I have just completed row one. I've got 199 half double crochets. So after every row, we are going to be turning our work. So this next row is going to be the right side of our work. So what I'm gonna do is turn my work. The way that I'm going to work my first stitch is going to be a stacked single crochet to make a double crochet. So let me show you how to do that. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can do chain three to count as your double crochet. You can do it as a chain two and double crochet, but we're not putting a border on this. So it is going to make a cleaner edge, but you can do it how you want. So making sure that the yarn is coming from the back side, not the front side, we are going to go in, we're not chaining one, we're gonna go into the stitch, pull up a loop, and make a single crochet. Now we have two loops on our single crochet. We have the top V, and then we have this bottom loop. That's the loop that we are going to go through to make our next single crochet. That's how we're gonna stack them. So we do two for a double crochet and th three for a treble crochet. That's the first stitch of row two. Now we're gonna put a double crochet into the next stitch. And here's our repeat. We're going to chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that. Repeat, chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet, into the stitch after that. So you are going to repeat that all the way down the end, and when you finish your last repeat, you should have one stitch left, and you'll place a double crochet in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out row two, and I will meet you back all the way at the end of row two. Your row two should end the same as it started with two double crochets at the beginning, two double crochets at the end. So go ahead and finish that out and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, I have completed my second row. And what I'm gonna do for row three is to chain one and turn my work. And now I'm gonna do a series of half double crochets. So half double crochet into every single stitch and chain space all the way down. You should have the same amount of half double crochets as row one. Our stitch counts are not changing throughout the entire pattern. So just half double crochet 
into every double crochet and every chain space all the way to the other side. Okay, I have just completed row three. What you're gonna do now is turn your work. We're gonna get started on row four. Now we're gonna do a stacked treble crochet. So remember without chaining one, making sure that your yarn is coming from the back. We're gonna put a single crochet into that first stitch. And then stack two single crochets on top of that. So not this loop closest to your hook, but the one on the inside, if you can tell there. That's the one we're gonna go through. Pull up a loop, a single crochet. Not the loop on the outside, but the one on the inside. And single crochet, and that is our stacked single crochet to create a treble crochet. Now we're gonna treble crochet into the next stitch. And here is our repeat. Chain one, skip one, treble crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, treble crochet into the next. We're working that just like the double crochet row, only we're working treble crochets. So your stitches should line up with your double crochets. Okay, so repeat that to the end, and then again you will have two treble crochets at the end, just like you did at the beginning. Okay, there we go, we've just completed row four. Row five is going to be a repeat of row three, which is the half double crochet row. So you're just going to chain one, turn your work, half double crochet into every treble crochet and every chain space all the way down. Go ahead and finish that out and I will meet you for the next row. All right, I've just completed row five. So for row six, you'll turn your work and you'll begin with a stacked double crochet. And we're gonna place a puff stitch directly into the next stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch and pull up a loop. We're gonna do that three times. Then we'll yarn over, pull through all but the last loop, and then yarn over and pull through the last two. Chain one, skip one stitch, puff into the next. Yarn over, pull through all but the last, and then the last two, chain one. And that's what you'll repeat all the way down until you have one stitch left, and I'll meet you back at the other end and we'll get started on the next row. Okay so at the end of row six once you've finished your last puff you should have one stitch left and we're going to put a double crochet into that stitch. Okay so now what you're going to do is turn your work Getting started on row seven, we're going to stack two single crochets to create a double crochet. Now we're gonna skip the puff stitch and into our chain one space, we're gonna put two double crochets. Skip the puff stitch into your chain one space, two double crochets. And that's what you're gonna do all the way down. Skipping your puff into your chain space, two double crochets. So that's what you're gonna complete for row seven. 
and I will meet you back to get started on row eight. Okay, here we are at the end of row seven. We're going to skip our last puff stitch and double crochet into the last stitch. So this is what your work should look like so far. And now getting started on the next row, we're going to turn our work and we're going to start again with a stacked single crochet to create a double crochet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to puff stitch in between the first stitch and these next two double crochets. Chain one, skip two double crochets, and then we'll puff stitch in between the these two double crochets. So we'll skip the two and then puff stitch before the next stitch. Chain one, skip your two double crochets and puff stitch. So we're puff stitching between our two double crochet groups. Separated of course by chain one space in between our puffs. So it should look like this. So continue that down to the end of the row and I will meet you back to get started on the next row. Okay, so I have made it to the end of row eight. I'm gonna put my last puff stitch in between my last two double crochet group and my last double crochet. And then straight from there, I'm going to put a double crochet into my last stitch. And this is what your work should look like so far. So we're half complete with the repeat. Um, what is going to happen next is you're going to, of course, turn your work. So from here, we're basically mirroring the other side. We are going to repeat row three, which is your half double crochet row. Row four, which is your treble crochet row. And then row three again, which is your half double crochet row. So I want you to repeat half double crochet, treble crochet, and then half double crochet. Those three rows coming up along here and then I will meet you back for the next part of our pattern. All right, so here is my panel completed up to row 11. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11. Now your repeat rows are gonna be rows two, which is your double crochet row, to 11. So you're going to start over again here for row two. Now this is the extent of the toddler panel. Every size when you complete your repeats of row two to 11, every size is then going to do repeat rows two and three. So every size is going to end with a row two and three additionally, a double crochet row and a half double crochet row. And then I'm going to make a panel the exact same. So you have two panels that look exactly the same. For the child size, you are going to repeat rows 2 through 11 one more time and then finish that out with a row 2 and 3. For the adult size, you're going to repeat rows 2 through 11 two more times and then you'll finish it out with a row two and three. And for the plus size adult, you will repeat rows two through 11 three more times. 
and then finish out with a double crochet row and a half double crochet row. And again, you will do that two times to create two panels. So I'm gonna finish out my child size. Remember, if you're making a toddler, this is your panel, plus that additional row. Two and three. Okay, so this will be the size for the toddler. Make another panel the exact same. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my repeats one extra time, rows two through 11, and then end with one additional. Row two and three. Okay, so finish yours out and I'm gonna meet you back here. I'm gonna show you how to put it all together, um, where to seam up, how much space to leave open for the neck, and all that kind of stuff, all right? So go ahead and do yours and I will meet you back here so we can get it all together and put it into like a real piece. Okay, so now we're ready to put our panels together. The rows with your treble crochet and your double crochets, um, the right side of those should look like this. Those are, that's the front side, or at least that's what I'm considering the front side. You can consider whatever side you want to be the front side. We're gonna take one panel and we are going to fold it in half, leaving 10 stitches from the bottom. Now, if you want your back to be longer than your front, this is how we're gonna do it. And if you want it to be the same size, then you can go ahead and seam them right next to each other. So what I'm going to do is just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and I'm just gonna place a stitch marker here so that way I know exactly where my 10 is. Now what we're gonna do is mark our stitches. This will be the inside and this will be the outside. So your last half double crochet row that you did will be the inside of your panel, right? So what we're gonna do is for a toddler size, we are going to mark about five inches in the front and approximately three inches in the back. For a child size, we're gonna mark approximately seven inches in the front and four inches in the back. For an adult size, 12 inches in the front, approximately seven in the back. For the adult plus size, we are going to do 13 inches in the front and about eight inches in the back. Now you can totally customize this for the desired um, width that you would like. It's not like you have to do these exact. This is just what I have found is going to work best. So I am going to measure out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna mark my front panel at seven inches. Okay. Now, because I'm making the child size, my front is seven and my back is four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to mark that stitch. So now what you're gonna do, here's, we're gonna take our next panel, making sure that they're laying the same kind of way. And I'm gonna line up all of my stitches to the best of my ability. Fold it over in half. And here's what you're gonna do now, is what you are going to do is count from the bottom front up to make sure that all of your stitches are lined up and then you'll connect your um, your stitch marker so that way we have the same exact amount of stitches going down the front so I'm gonna line everything up and I'm gonna go by these double crochets here to make it kind of easy that way I don't have to count right now I can just uh, 
make sure that my panels are lining up properly. And I'm gonna attach my stitch marker in there so that both are together, both pieces are together. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit difficult to move around if it's not sewn together and it's only held by that stitch marker. So what we're gonna do right now is take a tapestry needle and remember you left a long tail to sew. We're gonna go ahead and thread up our needle and we're gonna sew that front part together. And the way that I like to join them is a whip stitch. So I am just going inside of one V on one stitch and then through the other side of the V, like on the top of the stitch on the other side that we're putting together. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. sew it up all the way up to where our stitch marker is and then we'll turn it around and do the same thing for the back okay so now that I have finished seaming up the front side of the panel you can go ahead and lay your panel out now and double check that from the front neckline to where you marked the stitch on the back neckline that you have all of your stitches lining up again okay connect your stitch markers so that your panels are together and this is now going to be our neckline so then we'll move to the bottom of the back panel and we will take our tail weave up our tapestry needle and we will now begin to whip stitch the bottom of the back panel all the way up to the stitch marker. Okay, so I just finished up stitching the back. This is the front. And now what I'm going to do is fold my panels in half again. They should be one panel. And we are going to make sure again that we have those 10 stitches open or our 10 stitches um, longer in the back. Go ahead and mark them. and on the other side. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do now. We are gonna seam up the sides. Now, when we seam up the sides, in my opinion, because it's a beach cover-up, it's meant to be really loose and airy. We don't want it to be fitted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take approximately one third. So this is a whole one separated into thirds. We're gonna take approximately that middle third right there, leaving a nice cute little slit on the side, for the bottom and a nice large hole for the arms and we're going to take approximately that one third and seam it up so since we marked these stitches here we're going to line it up Finding the first part of your third and place a stitch marker through both sides. 
line it up again towards the top and we are going to we don't need this stitch marker down here anymore so I'm gonna place a stitch marker to line these guys up okay so take a look at it make sure it's approximately a third it could be a little bit more it could be a little bit less doesn't really matter I think this one should actually move down some more okay that looks about good that's where I'm gonna put mine at and now I'm gonna whip stitch here okay when you get to the other side you're essentially just gonna count your stitches going up mark that on the other side and then count your stitches in between your stitch markers mark it on the other side and then you'll just seam up both sides so that they're the same okay so I am going to go ahead and do that but the next thing that you want to do once you've got that complete is take a smaller hook say like a four millimeter hook and you're going to chain approximately two to three hundred chains depending on the length of it you want it to wrap around your body maybe a time and a half um, and then that way you have a tie to put on it the tie that you saw at the, in the photo in the beginning and all I did when I put the tie in is I just kind of like wove it through so it doesn't fall out just wove it through everything okay all right everybody thank you so much for watching Jolie Knotts Crochet I'm Crystal don't forget to find me on Facebook uh, Instagram under Jolie Knotts Crochet you can also join the Jolie Knotts Crochet community on Facebook and show us what you've created.